Hi, my name is Tom Roberts, and I am the state coordinator for Health Moves Minds here in Minnesota, and I'm also president-elect of MinShape. And I'd like to welcome you to this presentation of Health Moves Minds. And Health Moves Minds is a student-focused service learning initiative by Shape America that focuses on kindness and mindfulness, also focuses on some of these other words that you see right here, um, respect, empowerment, inclusion, equity. All of those terms are part of the Health Moves Minds program and the Health Moves Mind curriculum. Some of the things that I'm gonna go over in this presentation are uh, the overview of the content, uh, kind of the what, the why, and the how. Also, setting up uh, your your uh, Health Moves Mind event, actually setting up your team, how you do it, how you go to the website and actually do that. And then we'll talk a little bit about the fundraising part of it also. So once again, the what, the what is going to focus on Health Moves Minds. And when we talk about Health Moves Minds, we think of something that changes the culture of your school to a culture of kindness. No other fundraiser that I've ever done before has ever had that school-wide effect on my school and my school community. It's gonna teach your children to and your students to be more mindful of their emotions. It's going to teach them to be able to use the strategies that you give them when they're faced with stressful situations. Uh, and we all know that during this time, our students are faced with a whole lot of stressful situations, um, a lot of you know uncertainty, things that change daily, things that change you know by the minute. So. Uh, having the tools in their toolbox to help them deal with these stressful situations, that's what Health Moves Minds is all about. Once again, like I said, it's creating a culture. You're creating a culture of kindness, and you do not create a culture of kindness uh, in just six weeks. Like my previous fundraiser, um, like I did a jump rope unit. Um, and I did it for six weeks and then I had my assembly at the end and then that would be it. Um, but with this program, the beauty of it is you, you, you embed things daily and you create a culture daily by your daily actions and the things that you're modeling and the things that you're seeing in school. Um, and, and this will, this will permeate your school. It will be infectious throughout your school. Um, you'll see kindness posters in classroom hallways. Uh, you, you, you'll see students randomly doing kind things for their for their other students and their classmates. And it's a really, it's a heartwarming thing to see. And I saw it in my school last year. So it, it, it's, a, it's a game changer. Um, that teaches our students that taking care of one's mind and body, as well as being kind to others, helps us live our best and healthiest life. This is kind of a, a program overview. Uh, once again, uh, this cycle deals with uh, mental wellness, social emotional wellness, physical wellness, kindness, equity, diversity, inclusion. So the, the EDI piece in this program is huge also. And what we really want to focus on is the fact that our students cannot be successful academically if they're not in a good place mentally and socially. Um, and if they don't have the tools to deal with their emotions and be aware of their emotions and recognize their emotions, it's going to be really hard for them to be successful and really enjoy school. So 
like I have mentioned, during these times, this next school year or this school year that we're in now, um, it is huge to um, implement our social emotional uh, learning and our content and our strategies and our mindful minutes, which I'll talk a little bit more about later. Uh, these are things that are even more paramount in the world that we're living in right now with the pandemic and the uncertainty of the election and things like that. So this is a, a program that addresses those things and gives our students the tools to use and to have in their backpack and bring out when they need. This is kind of an overview of the um, the breakdown of, of developmental le levels here. We go K through five, that has its own curriculum. And then six through eight has its own curriculum. And then grades nine through 12 have their own curriculum also. And you'll see that each one is a little bit different in its, um, in its focus, uh, which helps you get into the developmental level that your students are in and meet them where they're at and be more age appropriate. Now I am going to show you um, a mindful minute. And this is something that I do with my students. And the way I show, tell my students to do it is I tell them to put their pointer fingers and their thumbs together. I have them sit crisscross applesauce on the floor if they're comfortable, or I have them sit in whichever way they're, they're most comfortable. If some students can't do that, they can sit however they like. Uh, I would prefer that they close their eyes but if they are not comfortable doing so, I tell them that they do not have to do that. And then we do it, well, the way I implement it is we started at 10 seconds and worked our way up 10 seconds a little bit more each week. So we, we started at 10, then we went 20 all the way up to, to 60. And once we worked our way up to 60, the students were um, used to it and they were easily able to do it for 60 seconds. So I'm gonna show you um, my good friend Michelle Huff from New Jersey, she has put together a lot of these resources and let me borrow them uh, for this presentation. So for that, I thank her and I give her the, um, the recognition for that. And we're going to watch her demonstrate what a mindful minute looks like. Wow. You have perfect timing. I was just getting ready to engage in a mindful minute. And now you could join me. I love it. A mindful minute is a health moves minds skill and technique that you could utilize in your everyday life. It's where you pause for a moment. So if you can right now, pause from whatever you're doing and be present with me for one minute. Sometimes one minute is all we need to reset. Reset our minds, reset our bodies, to refuel, repower, to just get us going again. So we're gonna learn this technique together. This way we could share with other people and help them. First, I would like for you to get comfortable. So you can sit like this or like this, or you could even lay down. If you feel safe, you could close your eyes. And we're gonna focus on our breathing and just notice what's around you. Ready? Begin. I feel so much better, and I hope you do too. So, like I said, you want to make sure that um, you do it in a most comfortable way for them. 
um, something where they can be comfortable and they can focus on their breathing. I always tell them, like Michelle said there in her video, concentrate on breathing in through your nose and out through your mouth. And the students usually do a pretty good job of doing that. Uh, you may get some, you know, when we first started doing it, there was some giggling and, and whatnot, but um, that's normal. And you just roll with it and, and hope that they uh, get the most out of it that they can and kind of just go from there. But my students did a very good job. We usually did it about two, three times a week. So it was a, it was a wonderful addition to my curriculum. Now I'll talk a little bit about the why. Now when I talk about the why for Health Moves Minds, I've kind of alluded to this already. I really enjoy doing the Health Moves Minds program because I really liked the fact that it was something that we could work on every day and that we, we could make it part of our culture and have it become a school-wide thing in a school-wide movement. And with my previous fundraisers, that wasn't the case. That's what makes this such a game changer is because you are involving your whole school community and you're changing your whole school community to a one, a culture of kindness. And obviously we've talked about the, the importance of the socio-emotional learning part of this. And you are gonna have a ton of curriculum based on your age level, whether it be K through five, six through eight, or nine through 12, that is gonna address those socio-emotional lessons. And you'll be able to implement them into your program. It doesn't have to be every day. It could be once or twice a week, but you'll wanna be um, kind of embedding the language daily. So your students get used to what the language is. And like we said, our, our students are carrying a lot of stuff in their backpack right now. So it's up to us to give them the strategies to deal with those emotional issues. And, and Health Moves Minds is a great program that allows us to do that and to help our students. The how, I've talked about kind of about the how already. Um, the how is doing it every day and embedding things every day, not necessarily with the whole lesson, but with the language, with having them feel and be aware of their emotions, that's something that you can do every day. So the, the really, really awesome thing about Health Moves Minds is like I've alluded to, is the awesome SEL curriculum that it provides you. Once you register, for, uh, for doing a Health Moves Mind event, you will be allowed to download all the resources. Now, this is one example right here. This is a K through two lesson dealing with a mindful minute and being aware of our feelings and being mindful. It's another activity that focuses on a mindful minute also in our breathing. Okay. Also the back part of the mindful minute. Now this I'm going to get into more uh, in the next couple slides, but this is our uh, emoji rating, our feelings scale. One being happy, two being silly, three being okay, four being sad, and five being worried. And I know a lot of teachers put that outside their gym door or their gymnasium door and for uh, the students to just check in as they leave or check in as they, they arrive. Uh, it's a good way for the students to be aware of how they're feeling at the present moment. And here's some other resources. That was the mindful minute. We also have the HALTED acronym. And this is what this is.
there was Michelle again showing us what the HALTED uh, acronym stands for. And we use that a lot. So obviously the H standing for hungry, the A standing for angry, the L standing for lonely, the T standing for tired, the E standing for embarrassed, and the D standing for disappointed. So using that acronym also allows our students to be aware of, of, of each feeling. And what I actually did is during our virtual learning this past spring uh, through Seesaw, I had students video themselves acting out each emotion. And it was really cool. I saw some, some awesome renditions of, of of their feelings and, and acting out each one. They were, they were really fun to watch. There's some more resources that you could use. Also, we have one of our main uh, objectives and initiatives is to get Health Moves Minds into our universities and uh, higher education institutions. Um, and into their PEAT programs. And the idea behind it is get our future professionals uh, familiar with the program. So they will uh, hopefully implement the program when they get their first um, job as a teacher. So the more work we can do in this area, the better it will be for promotion and advocacy for Health Moves Minds. And uh, Joe Deutsch of uh, North Dakota State University is doing a wonderful job of doing that. He was actually featured in a Joe Bird article uh, last spring, and it details what they are doing there. And we also have some other universities that are starting to, to uh, implement the, some of the Health Moves Minds uh, ideas and um, focus words into their PEAT programs right now, which is awesome. We, we need to continue to do that because the more we can do that, the more promotion we'll have and the more success we'll have uh, of, of, of getting our teachers to, to actually you know, implement the event when they become teachers. So great job, Joe, and all the other teachers that are, that are implementing into their PEAT programs. Also, this just came out. Uh, NDSU is offering one graduate credit for uh, any teacher that signs up and registers to do a Health Moves Mind event. So that'll look like this if I go to, this is their actual, okay. So for $75, you can, there's the course. Do not have to do the fundraising part of it. That is optional. Obviously, hopefully the fundraising part will come, you know, maybe the next year that you, that you do it. And, and that would be great. So once again, great job, Joe. Um, and, and we want to continue to advocate uh, and promote uh, health moves minds in the higher ed institutions and in our universities. Here is, uh, like I said, once you register for a health moves minds event, then you will be granted access to all the K through 12 SEL lessons, downloadable. Um, it's not just lessons, it's posters, it's banners, it's promotional material. Uh, Shape has done a wonderful job of giving you a ton of resources. So our real life examples are acts of kindness, empowerment, student led initiatives. One of the fun things that we did at uh, for my health moves minds at my school is we did a weekly how did it, how did I put the I in kind. We did it every Friday for our free choice day, and the students had to tell me how they put the eye in kind that week. And I heard some really, really heartfelt stories of students uh, helping out their brother or sister with homework or helping their parents with chores around the house. And it was a great way to connect with these students 
just for a, a brief five seconds and get them aware of that, that doing kind things makes you feel good and it's the right thing to do. More student-led initiatives, uh, kindness boxes with kindness notes to teachers, to other students. Also, we want to focus on World Kindness Day, which is held annually November 13th. You can have a student-led initiative on that day. You could have something, you know, maybe something the whole week, maybe a different focus each day. Call it a, whole, a kindness week. Um, but Health Moves Minds and Kindness Day really, really go together well. And it, it would be a good way if you do implement Health Moves Mind to piggyback on that Kindness Day idea. Here's a kindness wall where they stick kindness um, quotes on the kindness wall like confetti. There's another shout out for World Kindness Day. And these are all um, probably more for the six through eight to nine to 12 kind of age level more student-led leadership uh, opportunities. Uh, speaking of the 6th through 8th grade group and the 9th through 12th grade uh, group, you could also promote kindness using social media because we all know our students are on that quite a bit. So why not take advantage of it and post, you know, random acts of kindness on your Instagram or Twitter or whatever. We have student empowerment groups. Once again, this is more for probably the, the um, six through eight, nine through 12 group. Here's a student letter to a staff, to a teacher, a kindness letter, appreciation letter. Okay, now we're gonna get up to, and we're gonna talk a little bit about the, how we register. And we're gonna go through exactly how you register for a Health Moves Minds event. So the first thing you do is you go to healthmovesminds.org and you're gonna see a big red square up in the right corner. You're gonna click on that, you're gonna click register. There's register. You're gonna click create a team. And come up with a team name. Now the fundraising goal, if you wanna put zero, you can put zero. That's something that's totally up to you because the fundraiser is something that's optional. Yo, and so now it's register and create a fundraising account. There's all your personal information, your school information. And as far as the date of your event, that you can put, you know, any date, any date that you want, and that can be altered or changed if, if things change in the future, if things change um, for your school for whatever reason. So that's not set in stone. Then here's your waiver, agree to terms. That's just a review. And then you're all set. You got your team name and you're the captain. Then you can go ahead and promote it on social media. Great way to advocate and promote your Health Moves Mind program. And then you will have access to all of those lessons, K through 12, plus additional resources. Like I said, there's a lot of banners, uh, things that you can download as far as, you know, posters and, and things that you can display uh, at your school uh, during your event and all year long to help promote that uh, culture of kindness. All of these lessons are downloadable. So we can download them there. There's more lessons. So now a little bit more about the fundraising part of it. Obviously it's, um, it's optional. And what you can do is, and the great thing about Health Moves Minds is that there's two um, fundraising options. The first one is where 50% of the funds that you raise go directly back to your physical education department. And the other way is where 25% goes back to your PE department and the other 25 can go to a charity of your choosing. 
So it's a great way for you to make a, um, a connection with your school community and choose something that is local and immediate to your school and your school community. It can even be your, your PTO or your PTA. It can be the American Heart Association. If you have previously done a jump rope for heart event and you still wanted to support the American Heart Association, this would be a way to do it. Also, it can be any 501c3 organization. What I did was I chose uh, the Muscular Dystrophy Association, MDA, because one of my students uh, is fighting a battle with that. And we made a connection with that and supported the organization that has supported her so tremendously through her courageous fight. And this just tells the two options, the 50% op option and then the pay it forward option. And here's a little, there's a breakdown of where the fundraising dollars go. So like I said, the 50% goes to your school or if you choose the 25%, 25% would go to your school and 25% would go to your charity of choice. Then 25% goes to um, for, for program expenses. 15% goes to your state Shape America affiliate. So for us, that would be MinShape. And 10% goes to Shape America. So another reason why I feel that Health Moves Minds is a much better program than anything I've ever done is because previously with the fundraiser, I, I did uh, only about two to 3% came back to my state affiliate, to MinShape. With this program, 15% comes back to our state affiliate, which is, is, a, is a great thing. Also with your gift card that you get, with your 50% uh, or 25% for your physical education program, you can use it in several different ways. It doesn't have to be just go for equipment. It can be play with a purpose, uh, the recess equipment, uh, moving minds, uh, spark. And it can also go for STEM supplies, you know, with dealing with uh, technology, science and technology. So there's a variety of ways that you can use the funds that you raise. Also, a great thing is uh, just this past year, this past summer, Shape America has created a Health Moves Minds app, which makes it a lot easier to promote your event, to keep track of the fundraising part of it, if that's what you choose to do. So if there's any questions, we will now have a uh, chat for that. I welcome your questions. I thank you for attending. I encourage all of you to implement a Health Moves Mind program in your school. It is a game changer. It changes the culture to a culture of kindness. And it's a fantastic thing to see. So thank you. And uh, I hope that this presentation has uh, been beneficial and have a wonderful day.